good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mike and everything to get on. And so good to see everybody this morning. Uh, welcome to those out there on social media. They're here visiting with us today and have logged on. Um, Pastor Matt was moved out Friday. So uh, we wish him well, for sure. And I want to wish a happy Father's Day to everybody, all the guys here and those out on, in, uh, online. It's, uh, it's really special when you have your dad around to give him a big hug. And I kind of miss that because it's only been like four, four years since mine has passed. Be sure and check out your little inserts this morning. And shall we start with an opening prayer? We bow our heads. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, your grace has allowed us to gather together today in person and online to serve you and thank you for all that you have done in our lives. As we gather here in the harbor of your safety, we thank you for fellowship and family, and we ask that you will strengthen us, restore us, and inspire us with your love. Today is the day that you have made, Lord, and we rejoice and we are glad. As we continue this service, I ask that you fill us with your unlimited joy and refresh our spirits and let everyone see your glory and power through us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we join together with a sweet hour of prayer.
The spirit drifts over the face of the deep, and though the wind rises and the sea swells, the spirit is at rest. Let us worship the spirit inside us, for a voice upon the water whispers, Be still and know that I am God. The spirit leads us from chaos to calm, and though we fear the wind and dread the sea, the spirit restores our souls. Let us worship the Spirit in strength, for a voice upon the water speaks. Be not afraid, it is all. Good morning, everybody. God is good. And all the time. All right, if you can stand and join us.
Like them, we hear you inviting us on a voyage of trust. We confess that like the disciples, we are anxious, for you seem asleep to our cries. We confess that we find the appeal to trust you unreasonable when we are frantically bailing to prevent sinking. Hear us, O Lord. Rescue us from the fears that threaten to submerge us. Forgive us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like to invite uh, Jackie Cremens up for a mission moment. Um, Jackie. Could somebody give her a mic, please? Thank you, Renee. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Is that better? A little better? Um, as you know, our June mission event is the upcoming Dust Mapper Water Brigade. Um, it's coming quickly, next weekend, next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I have to tell you that we're, we're looking a little short on both donations of water and volunteers. Um, last Sunday, Pastor Mike talked about, well, look who's here, Gus, hi. <laughs> Last Sunday, Pastor Mike talked to us about backyard evangelism. And this water brigade is a really great opportunity for us to practice that. Right, Gus? Yeah. So the water brigade is more than just giving cool water to the players, the volunteers, the officials, the participants, and the uh, spectators. It's a chance an opportunity to make a connection with someone. Ask some questions. How are you doing? Are you having fun? Did you come from far away? Is this your first time in Ishpeme? Remember Pastor Mike said it's all about asking questions, making someone comfortable, talking to them. Think of the parable Jesus told about sowing seeds. These our words are the seeds. Some may fall on rocky ground. Some may fall among the weeds and thistles. Some may fall on shallow ground. We never know when the seed we plant will fall on fertile ground. But what we do know is if we are willing, God will use us. The matter is not just about basketball, right? It's also a fundraiser. Uh, two years ago, the Macker chose Baycliffe Health Camp as the beneficiary. Each city, town that hosts the Macker chooses who they want the funds that they raise donated to. This year, they are donating their funds to Camp Star, which is a camp for children between the ages of seven I'm sorry, between the ages of 8 and 17, who have experienced and are grieving the loss of a parent, a loved one, a sibling, a friend, a very worthy cause. So as you can see, Gus is more than just about basketball. Please consider volunteering. The sign-up sheet will be in the back, on the clipboard, on the clipboard. And even if you only have an hour to give, I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy it. And it will be more than you could have hoped for. And remember, always, please pray for our missions. Pray that God will use us as we make disciples of Jesus Christ and transform the world.
Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Gus. That's kind of a tough act to follow, eh? He's really cool. Get myself set up here so I know what I'm doing and everything else. Uh, please pray with me before we begin. Oh, Lord, give me peace as I speak the words I have put on paper. For I know I cannot do this without you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Father. Amen. The reading from Mark this morning takes us to the Sea of Galilee. But I want to give you a few statistics first before I read the scripture. The Sea of Galilee is 64 square miles and it has an average depth of 84 feet. The maximum depth in varying areas is 141 feet. Now, if you think about Grand Island up the mile off the shore of Munising, it only is 49.1 square miles. So kind of add another half of a Grand Island and that'll give you an idea of how big the Sea of Galilee is. Now knowing the statistics, let's place yourself in the shores, in, in, in the shoes of the disciples as I'm reading the scripture and think about what it would have been like to experience the storm on that day. Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. That evening, Jesus said to his followers, let's go across the lake, leaving the crowd behind. They took him in the boat just as he was. There were also other boats with them. A very strong wind came up on the lake. The waves came over the sides and into the boat so that it was already full of water. Jesus was at the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a cushion. His followers woke him and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're drowning? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind and said to the waves, Quiet. Be still. Then the wind stopped and it became completely calm. And Jesus said to his followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The followers were very afraid and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. I personally can uh, attest and had an experience similar to the disciples. I married my husband, Terry, in June of 1975. And five days later, when Terry got off from work, he, uh, we finished packing the car, we jumped in the car, and we were on the way to the Upper Peninsula. Now, Terry grew up in Christmas, and he only lived two blocks from Lake Superior, and he was always fascinated by, by Lake Superior, and it really held a very special place in his heart. I remember his mother telling me one time, as soon as the ice was out, he was in the water, and I'm like, but it's so cold. He wanted the girls and I to see and experience Lake Superior. So we drove straight through and arrived the next day in time for lunch with his mom. The very following day of our arrival was the 4th of July, which you know is a very busy day around the UP. And uh, once we rested up on the 5th, Terry kept us very busy, visiting, sightseeing, until it was time to go home. Well, the day before we were to leave, Terry decided to rent an aluminum boat. There was five of us in that aluminum boat, 
And the problem was, I don't know how to swim, and I had fear of deep water. Well, he convinced me everything will be okay because I'd be wearing a life jacket and my girls would be wearing a life jacket, so we're, we'll be fine. And as we were crossing this channel to the island, my stomach started getting very queasy and then the nausea set in and then a little fear reared its ugly little head. I didn't want to show my fear because I didn't want the girls ages five and six to be afraid. And we arrived at the island and I was starting to feel better because I started walking around and I was calming down and he said, we had to get back to the mainland because there was a storm coming. Well, you know how storms pop up and keeps you scrambling. Well, I actually told him I didn't know if I could get back in that boat. I was perfectly happy. I was on solid ground, but get back. And in a very firm voice, he told me I did not, did not have a choice. Well, his mother had a sedative, that, and she told me it was a mild one. So she gave it to me, told me to take it. Well, Terry put me, of all places, in the bow of the boat. Started raining, then the wind picked up, and then the waves got bigger, and I felt every single wave all the way down. Well, my fear my anxieties went to the highest possible level, and I never stopped praying until we reached shore. When we got at shore, I looked at... That's okay. When we, when we got back on shore, I looked at Terry and said, you will never get me on a small boat on Lake Superior ever again. And I'm walking back to the house now that I'm back on solid ground. Well, he wanted me to wait because there was a light rain. But I proceeded to walk the two blocks to the house. And oh, by the way, you know that mild sedative my mother-in-law gave me? Well, after I got dried up and relaxed, I fell asleep. And I slept till 10 o'clock the next morning, which was the day we were leaving. I had to get everything packed, loaded the car, and Terry drove just about all the way home because I couldn't wake up. That was her mild sedative. Well, John Wesley, he had a similar experience as the 12 disciples, and you could hardly call him a faith-hearted, stay-at-home uh, person, man. But there were times when even he lost his nerve. During one of Wesley's Atlantic crossings, a fierce storm broke out, and the tossing and pitching the ship like a little bathtub toy. Well, while Wesley and some of the others clung to their bunks and hid in their uh, and hid their heads, a community of Moravians traveled to their new homeland calmly gathered together to hold their daily worship service and sing praises to God. Now, while Wesley was watching the Moravians, apparently unafraid of the howling winds and crashing waves, he realized he was witnessing a truly waterproof faith. And from that moment on, Wesley prayed that God would give him the ability to ride out life's storms with so much confidence. What made those Arabians so peaceful in the face of the tempest? Well, it was the same trait the disciples so woefully lacked in our reading from Mark. And I even lack from it from time to time. I like how Francis Chan 
comments on this scripture in a Bible study on Mark. He wrote, it says something important about the disciples that instead of dealing with the source of their problem directly, they turned to Jesus. They'd seen him perform miracle after miracle. They knew he could save them. But their fear came from doubting whether he would save them. In the midst of that fear, Jesus displays his power in the grandest way yet. End quote. After stretching out his arms and stilling the storm, Jesus turned his, to his disciples and chastised them by cowardly cringing and crying out to Jesus in fear. They had revealed the shallowness of their faith. Although they had been specifically and specially chosen as Jesus' fellow travelers on this journey, they missed the boat. What could have been more thrilling than watching Jesus calm a storm? The miracle Jesus wanted to show the disciples was not him calming the storm, but the miracle of him calming the disciples in spite of the storm. Another thing I can relate to. <laughs> that was the faith these Moravians showed to John Wesley. They knew with Jesus there was no storm, too fierce, no opponent, too great, and no crisis, too complete. The disciples lost on their chance to experience the jubilation, the sheer exhilaration that could have been theirs had they had the courage to ride the waves of that storm with Jesus. Instead, they forced Jesus to shut down the ride and sail into port calmly. So, how many of us have voluntarily tried on our day? How many of us keep landlocked for safety sakes? If a few of us do venture out on the water, it's usually only to paddle in the shadows, or the shallows, I'm sorry. We're afraid to sail too far away from land. Are we afraid the wind might grab us and take us off into unknown distance? and directions. Now, if we said yes to any of these questions, verse 40 should speak to us loud and clear. For he said to his followers, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Now, sure, the disciples had an advantage over us, by witnessing Jesus perform miracles. But they were still afraid. Why? Why were they still afraid? They were with him every day in fellowship and learning. But then I thought, we have an advantage over them. They hadn't witnessed the death and the resurrection of Christ yet. We know about the death. We know about the resurrection. And we know what it will do for us. The resurrection teaches us that we don't have to fear anything, even death itself. So why do we still want to stay anchored in safe, snug harbors? Perhaps we're more afraid of being failures than fatalities. If we only see this story as a miracle in which a storm is still, then it is external to us. But if we read that storm as a call to to be Jesus' disciple who turns to him, then it is universally true. It's something that still happens and can happen with us. We can recognize our fears for what they are and that Christ's power means peace at the heart of us whenever we are threatened. Since March of last year, there have been many storms in each one of our lives, and we have survived 
but Jesus is calming the waters for us when we called out to him. Our church is entering into a new season with Pastor Bob and his wife, Robin. They're arriving soon. I think it's one week. There is always a bit of anxiousness, fears, and doubts when the church receives a new pastor. Remember, please remember, prayer is very important, and this is our opportunity to turn to Jesus for help, to calm our anxiousness, calm our fears and doubts during this transition. Don't let the storm win. Let Jesus win. Jesus doesn't want us to have a life without challenge and adventure. And all through his ministry, Jesus kept leading the disciples to a new community or grabbing a boat to journey to a new shore. Jesus doesn't call us to live within a narrow and safe confines that limit us. Jesus calls us to be on the move, expanding our limits. That, my friends, is the continuing call of the church. To go everywhere, be everywhere, to hit the road and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Now, how else can the church fulfill the command Jesus gave us in the first verse of the Great Commission, found in Mark 16, verse 15? <coughs> Jesus said to his followers, go everywhere in the world and tell the good news to everyone. We are not to let the world see us. We are not to let the world see in us that Christ calms our fears and calls us to faith. Boy, I read that all wrong. I wrote, I wrote this three times. I've read it half a dozen. I still say it wrong. We are to let the world see in us that Christ calms our fears and calls us to faith. We are to let the world know that he is Lord for us, even in the midst of fears and sufferings and trials, our storms. You and I are to let the world see the calm and the faith and the victory in us through Jesus Christ. That world is not two or 3,000 miles away from here. My friends, it's just outside that door. God loves you, and so do I. Amen. We're joined together to sing Trust and Obey.
offerings we have received over the past week, and uh, the offering plate is just outside the door, and you brought yours this morning. So shall we bow our heads? Father, we ask your blessing on the tithes and offerings we have received this morning and during the past week by mail or online. May we use these monies wisely to glorify your name and be your hands and feet here on earth. In your son's name, amen. <laughs>
So give you a little hug if you really sit there and vent to him. You can actually feel it. So hope in the peace and the love of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.